As Richard said, a planning council was chaired by Peter Harris, then the principal of Billinock College in Muralbark. And Peter made a significant contribution to the achievement of today's reality, and I joined the Chancellor in commending him for that. There are a number of others whose work should also be acknowledged. There is always a risk in mentioning individuals at any time like this, because it's so easy to miss out on some who played an important role. Mr Pratt has already paid tribute to several of these people, but I'd like to acknowledge three in particular. I remember the untiring work of my colleague, the Honourable Rosemary Varty, who unfortunately could not be with us today. Rosemary can be proud of today's outcome, and it's everything that we worked for, and we're joined with the work in that's for, subsequently by Lorraine Elliott, Steve McCarthy, and Jim Plowman, as well as Bob Halverson. I must also acknowledge the role of Vice-Chancellor Ian Wallace and Deputy Vice-Chancellor Frank Bannon in all of this. They took on the responsibility of becoming the designated higher education provider here, as I've mentioned, and undertook a number of significant commitments to the campus's development, which they have done their best to honour. The hard work did not finish with the Planning Council, because what the Council did was convince government of the need for the campus in the Outer East. In this context, I'm pleased to see that my former colleague, Haddon Storey, who played a great part in the formulation of this campus concept, is with us today. One of Haddon's first decisions as the then Minister for uh, Tertiary Education Training on coming to office after the 1992 election was to publicly state the Kennett government's absolute commitment to providing first-class tertiary education in the Outer East. And Haddon ensured that the vision and plans of all of us were translated into action. Once the decision was made to have the campus in the Outer East region, the next step was to decide where to build it. And the group which took on that task of selecting this magnificent site was a working party, including State and Commonwealth officers, Frank Bannon and Maury Kerwood, director of the then Outer Eastern College of TAFE. This group also included State Higher Education and TAFE sector officers, including Ian Allen and Patricia Needham from our department, who both worked very hard to achieve the coordination. The membership of that working party illustrates a cooperation which can sometimes exist across government departments, agencies and governments when the cause is right. Local government has been particularly important in this initiative. In the early stages, Warwick Heine, the then Chief Executive of the Shah of Lilydale, and members of the Shah Council, particularly Giz Marvin, gave a great deal of support. This was not only encouragement, but also practical help. And the Shah of Yarra Rangers came good with a five acre parcel of land as part of the campus as well. So for all these efforts, we sit here today and admire the end result. And despite appearances, the property is not entirely a greenfield site. It had previous owners and business operators whose interests were necessarily affected by the acquisition. I have to say that while the acquisition process has been long and very complicated, there has always been recognition by those affected that the campus is vital for the region and the relationships with neighbours, and I'm thinking here particularly of David Mitchell Limited and its chief executive, Greg Runge, have been very constructive. Developments like this are not cheap. The Kennett government has provided close to $9 million so far and growing to acquire the site, and the Commonwealth put in, as we've heard, a similar amount for the initial stages of construction. Swinburne is also contributing substantial funds which the Chancellor, with his usual modesty, didn't mention, but of course uh, Swinburne is contributing funds of close to $5 million themselves as part of this uh, joint partnership to bringing higher education to this region. It's been the intention of the State Government to transfer the title and grant ownership of the land to the University. And I'm very pleased to confirm today that commitment on the part of the State Government. We will transfer the title and the ownership of this land to Swinburne very shortly. And this site will then belong truly to Swinburne and to the people of the Outer East. This is a significant building, a very impressive structure, setting the stage for a world-class university development. I commend the architect, Glenn Merkett, for his design and his vision, and Swinburne under the leadership of Richard Pratt and Ian Wallace for their drive to ensure that we have developed a campus with such a first-class infrastructure. And I'm sure, ladies and gentlemen, if you look to the left and you look at the lake, we can already see that in a couple of weeks' time there's going to be students, probably most of them jogging these days because they're all much fitter than we were, but uh, jogging around that lake or walking around that lake or sitting down there 
uh, pontificating about philosophy and the state of the world and uh, the vagaries of politics and their politicians. Uh, whatever they're going to do, they've found a nice place and we've discovered a nice place for them to do it. And that's all part of growing and learning and uh, developing your life experiences. We are planning for the long term here, for a campus which will serve this community and the Outer East for generations. The early stages look very promising. There are 14,500 students from the Outer East region attending universities as we speak. But at present, as I said earlier, most have to travel still long distances to campuses many kilometres away. This campus is intended to provide a local alternative and in doing so to encourage higher levels of participation in tertiary studies. The campus is already having an effect and this year, in contrast to a statewide slight reduction in applications for university study, the number at this campus will actually uh, increase. And applications were more than double the number of places which could be made available, unfortunately. There are 1,063 students enrolled this year here, a number which is much greater than originally expected. The campus will grow, by, uh, grow to 1,200 students by the year 2000, and these 1,200 students will be higher education students. From 1998, only a year away, we will see another large group of students on this campus, and they will be the TAFE students of the Eastern Institute. As the Chancellor indicated, this campus will be shared, ladies and gentlemen, with the Eastern Institute of TAFE, an excellent example of cooperative development between universities and TAFE. And I might add that of the five multi-sector institutions in Australia, in other words, that combine university and TAFE study together, four of those five are here in Victoria, which is a wonderful achievement in terms of providing opportunities to young people. A major TAFE building project for the Eastern Institute worth $7 million is underway as we speak, and some of you will have seen it here today, over there. That's the first $7 million stage one of the TAFE part of the campus, and the new TAFE building will be completed by this time next year. The campus plan envisages a sharing of the new TAFE facilities and the excellent facilities here in this building by university and TAFE students. No segregation, no barriers, no Berlin Wall, only pathways. And by pathways, I refer, of course, to Victoria's leadership in Australia of credit transfer. Because as many of you would realise, here in this state, it's far easier than anywhere else in Australia to actually embark on a TAFE diploma and gain credit for having done that TAFE diploma in a subsequent university degree. And the encouragement for TAFE students is to come on to university, particularly when they've got a university in their own backyard here at Lilydale. So that's another example where Victoria has been different to others elsewhere. This is all good news, but as the man on TV says, there's more. I'm delighted to inform you that I've received yesterday confirmation from the Commonwealth Government that they have accepted my recommendation for additional TAFE capital funding here. And this means that we will commence construction early next year of a second major building for the Eastern Institute on this campus. Building 1B, as it will be known, another $6 million project, will accelerate the development of the campus and ensure that by the year 2000, we will have not one, not two, but three major teaching buildings here on this campus. And I'd like Senator Patterson to take back to Federal Minister Vanstone our gratitude for that support as I'm sure Maury Kerwood would join uh, with us in that good news today. So it's not a bad effort. And all round, congratulations to the community for ensuring that government, of whatever political persuasion, has listened to the needs out here and is making sure that your children and your grandchildren will have the finest world-class education opportunities available.